Boar's Head invites you to enlighten your senses. Introducing Boar's Head Ichiban Teriyaki-style chicken. Inspired by Japanese master chefs, our signature teriyaki glaze is crafted with garlic, ginger, and a hint of brown sugar. Then paired with our tender, slow-roasted chicken breast for a flavor that's sweet, savory, remarkably bold. Boar's Head Ichiban Teriyaki-style chicken. The bold flavor of Japan. Now at the deli. Compromise elsewhere. Blog Talk Radio. Hi, folks. It's Chris Daly. It's always great to engage with you. And do we have a treat for you tonight? We're going to be bringing you one of Jamaica's out and coming creative genius. Her name is Jennifer Holmes. She's the producer, writer, and director of the feature film project Home Again. She has done many other pieces of work in her background, such as she's co-created a 13-week, half-an-hour comedy, She's the Mayor, which tells the story of a political neophyte trying to run a crumbling steel city. Her feature film, Love, Sex, and Eaten the Bones, has won nine festival awards uh, internationally, including the most um, prize of the best first film. We enter into a conversation with Jennifer this evening to find out some of the inside information for more latest work, the Home Again feature film. To conduct the interview is my pal, Janice Maxwell. Take it away, Janice. Well, thanks, Chris. Jennifer, how are you doing? Oh, I am. I'm really good, and I'm happy to be here with you guys tonight. <laughs> so share with us a little bit about your Jamaican roots. Sure, absolutely. So um, I was born in Jamaica, in Montego Bay, and um, I came to Canada when I was about um, five years old. And um, and so, uh, you know, I, I was raised in Canada, uh, but with strong Jamaican ties. So, for example, my grandmother up until three years ago, who was very close with, um, uh, you know, never left Jamaica. And so, um, you know, for me, uh, being a Jamaican-Canadian jam cam, as, as we call them, as is sort of a big part of my identity. Mm. So tell us about the movie inspiration. Tell us about yeah, Home Again. So actually, it's really interesting. So Home Again is a feature film about three young people who were raised abroad and then in um, in their 20s are deported back to Jamaica. And Home Again came out of my own personal experience in the sense that growing up in Toronto, I met a young man uh, in grade school and then later in junior high who, when I was in my 20s, I found out had been deported. The thing that was interesting to me or really shocking was that he had come to Canada when he was 17 months old. So I said to myself, how is it possible for someone who came to Canada, you know, at 17 months old to be deported as Jamaican, right, in their 20s? So that actually, that question and sort of that understanding of what deportation could be led me and my, my actually my directing partner, Sud Sutherland, to um, go to Jamaica and interview over 40 deportees to try to understand what was going on. And um, we found deportees from all over the world, but Canada, the U.S., and the U.K. were the biggest uh, numbers of deportees we found, and it was just shocking, the conditions. Um, and so that was a part of the reason why we wanted to, to tell this story and Mm. And I see, but how did you create such um, a remarkable team? I'm sorry. How did you create your team? To oh, okay, so how? Yeah, so how it came together? Oh my gosh! So how it came together is that um, so we went down, like I said, uh, this was actually in 2005, and we did all these interviews, and we we, we for example, we met um, you know young men from. People who had been raised in Scarborough, so Scarborough is like a like a, a city in Canada, in Toronto, and um, you know this young man said to us, you know, I've been shot, I've been burnt, I've been stabbed, nothing um, that 
as ha- can, can happen to a human being hasn't happened to me, and I don't fear death. So with those words ringing in my brain, what happened was we came back to Canada. The National Film Board was working with us on the development. And so we, we over the next five years, uh, off and on, we worked on the screenplay. And in 2010, we had a completed screenplay. And, um, uh, and so um, we actually found a partner um, uh, who, to help us with the financing because I, I, I found about half of the money and Don Carmody came on board with about the other half of the, the money. And Don Carmody is um, basically the biggest producer, in, in, uh, Canadian uh, producer, so he does things like Resident Evil and Silent Hill and he's been involved oh. in Chicago. So, uh, you know, we convinced him with the script um, to help us with the financing. And so with the financing together, we actually started to look around to where to shoot. And then we, um, you know, we ended up going to Trinidad. So that's kind of like how the, the team came together. So it was myself as the writer-producer along with Sud Sutherland, the writer-director. And then we worked with Lisa Wickham, um, the Trinidad producer, and as well as with a, a, a Canadian uh, line producer and, and then Don Carmody. So that's kind of how we pulled it together. And then when we landed in Trinidad, we actually started to look about casting. And um, I, I don't know if you want me to talk about how we cast the movie, but um, well, it has some well, powerhouses. But well, what I'm yeah. curious about is that um, I'm sure Trinidad has a deportee problem too, but mm-hmm. sorry, it was based on Jamaican deportees. Um, yes. Why did you choose Trinidad as opposed to Jamaica? Yeah, to shoot. Well, two reasons. Number one is that I was raised in Toronto, and you know, if you work in film and television, you know that um, I think a, a, a significant portion of Hollywood films are shot in Toronto. So I, it was not unfamiliar yeah. to me for movies to be shot in Toronto for America. So, for example, mm-hmm. Chicago, a movie called Chicago was shot in Toronto. So that's yeah. been my understanding of film and television. You make a film and television where it makes sense financially and all the other reasons. So that was one part of it. But originally we had every intention of shooting this movie in Jamaica. Mm-hmm. We approached, though, the Jamaican um, government through um, JAMPRO and through the, the film commissioners, two film commissioners. And th- the truth is is that they just did not have the wi- they just weren't willing to help i think jamaica has a, a mindset that you know if you want to come to shoot in jamaica you bring all the resources you spend all the money and you hire our people and and that's how the deal works the problem though <laughs> is unless you're a hollywood movie with tons of money if you're an independent producer you need to have something back you need to have some kind of the funding coming out of the place where you're going to spend money in our case we we let jamaica know we were going to spend over a million dollars entirely on jamaica cast crew and services and what we were looking for was somewhere in the neighborhood of 250 to 350 from out of the, out of that spend and um and in actual fact we ended up spending something like 1.6 or 7 million dollars in trinidad but we, but we broke down what we would spend. We broke down how we would do it. We we really tried to convince them that this was a win-win situation. We talked about the fact that we would be training, all of these things. And you know what? They just were, they had no political will to help us. Because like I said, the notion is, you know, um, basically, we're Jamaica, and if you want to be here, you spend the money. <laughs> and uh, okay. and that was that was really it. So at the end of the day, we needed we had a shortfall, and mm-hmm. Trinidad through Carla Fotheringham, who was the film commissioner down there, she had met me at TIFF, and I tell you, almost every single year until we decided to shoot, she kept calling me and sending me emails saying, "Hey, come and check out Trinidad. We've got this thirty five percent cash back. Mm-hmm. You got to check it out." So in two thousand and eleven, when um. You know, we, it looked like we had gotten all the financing. Um, I made another big push to Jamaica. It didn't happen. Carla called me a week after um, it looked like it wasn't going to happen in Jamaica, and I went down with Suds, the director, to Trinidad. Lisa Wickham was our locations manager, and we 
check out the location because we were not convinced that we could shoot uh, a, this movie in Trinidad because, you know, we wanted the authentic Jamaica look and feel. But we went down and we were impressed. And, yeah. uh, you know, and and they opened up their doors to us. Yeah, you know? I could imagine. Well, so, and that was it. Well, hopefully, um, well, we're speaking to a primarily diaspora community, but there are Jamaicans that do listen to this program. So I did, um, I'm sure they, hopefully they will hear the word that the diaspora has, can bring a lot to the table, but they have to be willing to work with us. And if they're not willing to work with us, there are other Caribbean islands that are more than willing to take all that British pounds, Canadian <laughs> A US Canadian US. dollars and American dollars and U.S. pounds. So it is essential that our community uh, start having a serious dialogue and stop um, and have a better communication. Um, you have a you had a remarkable cast. Um, to see it. All, all these people are of either West Indian or descent in some way. Tatiana Ali, she's from Panama. Or she's of Panamanian descent. City of Powders from Grenada. Um, so I was just curious how you, how was it, I understand the reason behind you choosing Trinidad, but um, these these um, these actors and actresses, uh, uh, how did you end up choosing those actors? Well, you know, again, with my Jamaican background, and, you know, I I grew up absolutely committed to like the Caribbean and just being a part of a diasporic um, movement, you know. So for me, black Americans, Jamaicans, Trinidadians, we're all one. I mean, I, I feel like and I've always felt like, you know, we are all going for the same thing. So when we were trying to cast the movie, I really wanted to have um, like a real a diasporic feel to, to who the people, like the people we cast, that they understood some of the issues, that they cared about some of the issues. So, mm-hmm. in actual fact, you're right, Tatiana, her mother's Panamanian, and her father is actually Trinidadian. And mm-hmm. so, we um, sent the script to her because, you know, first of all, we grew up with her as Ashley Banks, but we wanted to see um, her, you know, like we hadn't seen her in a dramatic role. And I actually mm-hmm. thought, and I, and I think sometimes something that happens with, you know, actors of color, black actors, is that sometimes they get um, typecast. Yeah. And so she was doing a lot of comedy, but, you yeah. know, nothing dramatic. So because of her background, we thought maybe she would understand some of the issues in the Caribbean, but we also wanted to see her, you know, stretch out of the very, I think, not say limited, but specific box yeah. that she'd been mm-hmm. placed into. So that's why we offered her the role. CCH, oh. I, you know, CCH Pounder, I've been a massive fan of her, fan of hers, and in fact, I actually thought she was American. But when we started casting, I found out she was Guyanese, which made it even better because oh, I, I think, in fact, that's part of the reason why she really came on board, like, right away. Because she oh, understood, okay. the, you know, these Good. issues, you know? Um, you know, because her career is in Hollywood, right? right but she right. has that background. Yeah. And, I, I, um, yeah, so so that was a big part of it. But in addition to that, I mean, Lyric Bent, for example, who plays Dunstan, one of the leads, he is a Jamaican Canadian, and mm-hmm. um, we cast another Jamaican Canadian, born in Canada. Lyric was born in Jamaica, but this young man, Stephen James, born in Canada, Jamaican parentage. We took the film to London, and the British people asked us, "Where did we find this young British boy?" <laughs> so you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> So we really we so I think the casting was really important and I and I and it, we just found that um you know stretching you know the diaspora tapping into all the different possibilities of who we are and bringing mm-hmm. a cast together that was our goal. Yeah. Well, we definitely they all stepped to the plate and I was uh happy about that. You know, to show the range of their craft. Um how, how has this movie been in, uh, inspiring the diaspora, not just the Jamaican diaspora, the Caribbean diaspora, and others as well? How has that impacted when you um, when you see the screen? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. You know, the reality is this: 
deportation is not a Jamaican problem. It is no, not a no. Trinidad problem. It is a Caribbean-wide, worldwide issue. Do you know that in London, the number one country for deportation is India? In America, it's um, sort of Mexican. So mm -hmm. we are all, whatever country you go to, you're going to find a population that is being targeted in some way for deportation. And that right. the governments are, um, are really, they're looking for a way to not have to deal with certain problems. So deportation is sort of an easy shorthand. So what we have right. found is that, you know, almost anybody can actually relate. Um, yes. Someone came up to me and said to me, you know what, I'm, a security, I'm on a security team, and you know who I deport? Russians. Every couple of weeks I'm on a plane with a bunch of Russians taking them back home to Russia. So I, I really feel like this movie... Um, you know, with so resonance. Yes. Absolutely. And, you know, we screened in London, and someone with, uh, from, uh, with a Ghanaian background came to us and said, this movie needs to be seen in Ghana. We want to help you bring this movie there because this story, a cousin of mine, that's their story. So it really is a movie that, can, that resonates, and mm -hmm. um, particularly if, you know, you come to a, you know, you're from a group of people who are trying to find your way in a new country in some way. Right. You know, whether it's been, you know, two decades or 200 decades. Right. So what is the message do you want um, the audience to walk away with? Well, I, I think it's twofold. I think one of them is this. What, is, what we're showing you in the movie, it can happen to people you know, and, you know, and we really, as a, a, as a global community, you know, must stand together and say this is wrong. Mm -hmm. um, because, I, you know, I believe that when someone comes to a country and they are successful, you know, Olympic athletes, for example, you know what happens? It's, I don't see any newspaper in America, for example, saying Jamaican-born, American-raised, blah, 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 just won a gold, gold medal. They say American athlete just won a gold medal. You can, so I feel that when we, you must take the good with the bad. And if you take someone and you raise them up in your country and things don't work out, you've got to take the responsibility too. Someone said to me, it's like adopting a child. You adopt a child and you hope for the best and you do your best to raise him. But if that child doesn't turn out the way you want it, you cannot send the child back. And so that's kind of a, the message. It's like we should actually look at solving the problems in our inner cities, for example, rather than deporting the problems. So that's a big message for me, and um, and just knowing, you know, for people to know that it's, you know, that we have to be a compassionate society, and we have to look out for each other. What other current Caribbean scene would you like um, to present on the big screen? Well, you know. I would love, look, I would love to do stories that involve um, Caribbean stories. I'm right now working on a story called Operation Red Dog, for example, um, which is about a coup that nearly happened on the island of Dominica. And that coup involved a bunch of Canadians. It involved a bunch of Americans. It involved a, um, a KKK guys and um, a Jewish guy and a black ex nationals working together to This is based take on a story? This is based on a true story. They okay. worked together to try to take over the island of Dominica in the early eighties. And so that's really? the next story I'm working on. And so I'm really fascinated by the amazing stories that come out of um uh, you know, our communities that you mm -hmm. rarely see. And so, you know, um, Home Again was um, much more of a political film. This one is more of an action-adventure comedy. You know, we want to have some fun with that one. But this is it. You know, you, you make, you, you know, it doesn't all have to be dark. 
It doesn't always have to be, you know, um, intense because we have so many different stories. So I just want to have an opportunity to keep telling great stories from all over the world, the stories that sometimes we overlook because, you know, it doesn't have a white face to it per se. Or they, they not even that it doesn't have a white face to it, but they don't think it may have any resonance to them because you say that a lot of people from um, the, the various countries that that you went, that they saw the screening, that the, the deportation um, has resonance with a lot of people who are and find themselves in London or Toronto or Chicago, for that matter. So That's right. So do you have any parting words of wisdom? You know, I mean, one of the things we've done in making the film, and when we go, we give talks and things like that, and we say for um, for people who are new immigrants or, you know, because even immigrants for the last 30 years, because people are being deported after being in a country for 30, 40 years, we yeah. say this, um, yeah, oh, yeah. We say to them, get your papers. Do everything possible in your powers to have all of your papers and documents in line and do it early. Um, And I guess the and and the second thing is that is that don't just walk on by, you know, because it could happen, if not to you directly, to someone in your family, someone you love, and um, you know, we we have to. we have to take care of each other. And, and last but not least, for these kinds of stories to get made, you know, we have to go out and support these kinds of movies. Absolutely. I know as a producer that one of the things that I'm always being told is that if we, that black films, for example, you can't sell them internationally or it's a limited audience, we need to make sure we go out there and with our dollars, Okay, show the world that these stories are important because that's how more of these stories get made. Yes, and um, I so agree with you. So to learn more about Chris Daly, visit Let's Get Mobile and Social. To learn more about Jamaican Diaspora, visit JamaicanDiaspora.com. And um, if someone wants to get a hold of you or learn about your movie, how can they do that, Jennifer? Oh, yes. Um, Okay, so we have... um, um, you can. Our, we have a website, um, www.homeagain.ca. Uh, um, on Facebook, if you go on Facebook and put Home Again, we have a very, very active Facebook. So just put in Home Again and you will find us. Um, you know, those are some of the best ways because, like I said, we're really responsive and we want to hear from people. We want to hear if people like the movie. We want to hear if they have any questions, if they want to know what's happening with the actors. So, yeah, so either yeah. Facebook us or go to our website. Absolutely. What, one of quick question. You. When will it, will it be available outside of the theater? Well, you know what? I'm so excited. Um, I'm so glad you asked this. So November 15th, Image Media is releasing Home Again in the U.S. Um, on VOD and in DVD. So um, we, didn't do a, we weren't able to do a theatrical in, um, in the U.S. per se, but it's going to be on VOD and on video in the U.S. as of November 15th. So I want everybody who's listening to this program to download us, get home again, watch the movie, and then Facebook us. Tell us what you think. You know, we'd love to hear from you. Okay. Well, thank and bye now. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Okay. When you don't go to Geico.com, car insurance can be confusing. Like Swedish techno confusing. Bark, bark, meow, meow. Dance with me, purple cow. Bark, bark, meow, meow. Ooh, you lovely cow. Geico makes it easy. With 24-7 access, all you have to do is go to Geico.com and you can save money on car insurance. It just makes sense. Unlike, you know. Dance with me, purple cow. I like your mood. Boar's Head invites you to enlighten your senses. Introducing Boar's Head Ichiban Teriyaki-style chicken. Inspired by Japanese master chefs, 
Our signature teriyaki glaze is crafted with garlic, ginger, and a hint of brown sugar. Then paired with our tender, slow-roasted chicken breast for a flavor that's sweet, savory, remarkably bold. Boar's Head Ichiban Teriyaki Style Chicken. The bold flavor of Japan. Now at the deli. Compromise elsewhere.